Welcome back into another episode of the Fantasy Football Fellas. Lucas Cameron and Tyler here. Fellas, how are we doing? We doing. On this Friday. We doing. We doing, we doing great. We doing great. We doing great. About weekend time, so we're doing good. Yeah, I am. Uh, well, I guess this is a spoiler. I'm going to Florida on Sunday. So, uh, not Florida, California. Wow. I don't even know where I'm flying to. Start the, start it over. So cut it, start it over. (laughs) No, I am flying out to California next week on Sunday. Flying out to California on Sunday for the week next week. So I'm ready to hop on an airplane and get some warm weather. Go out. uh, We are going out to uh, visit my wife's brother and have, have a good time out there. Take a week in the sun. Get yes, out of sir. this Minnesota humidity. Yeah, I'm looking forward yes, to it. But that also means I won't be here next week. So this is the last episode you have to do with me for a whole week. I know. Yeah, see. Yes, sir. See, <laughs> Tyler, I wasn't this mean to Tyler when uh, he was he fist pumping back here. I Can you imagine this. how I felt when you guys forgot to acknowledge my absence <laughs> in last week's episode. At your house. It hurt <laughs> at my house. It hurts. It hurts deep. It's all right. I give you permission to not acknowledge my absence uh, <laughs> next week as well. Uh, let's get into it right away. We got quite a bit of content to get through today with wrapping out the NFC East of Philadelphia Eagles. And then how about the Dallas Cowboys oh, down in Texas? Oh, oh. But before we even get there, per usual. Hot take, Ty. Coming at you again. What do we got today from the Eagles or the Cowboys? Oh, I go to the Cowboys. All right. And uh, I look at the receivers, and we got Amari Cooper. We got CD Lamb. Ladies Michael Gallup. And- don't disrespect Michael Gallup. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. But go ahead. Okay. I won't interrupt your segment. <laughs> I, I won't interrupt your that. segment. Ladies and gentlemen, hot take of this episode is that C.D. Lamb will finish above Amari Cooper no! in rankings. I love it. No! I love it. I said it, and I stick by it. I love it. I hope you get crucified. In the <laughs> Take this man down. <laughs> he has had enough. He has had enough of my hot takes. Oh, <laughs> Last week's I was fine with after you explained it, but this week. I can't do it. <laughs> you heard it here first. The best part is I there's been quite a bit of buzz that I don't think it's a hot take. It's don't a get hot me wrong. Take. It is a hot take. But I don't I will not deny it. I I might be with you. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility Ooh, for CD Lamb. <laughs> Another hot take I'm on board with. Uh but before we get to CD Lamb, Mari Cooper and the Dallas Cowboys, let's start with. The Philadelphia Eagles, who we again project to finish below the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, we're not super big Eagles fans no. over here. <laughs> no, not. Uh, and I think the biggest part is that uh, because there's a running back on the Philadelphia Eagles, <laughs> uh, we're gonna get back. Maybe maybe we need to have these the two things of the the two staples of our podcast be hot take tie. And someone's just got a monologue to start an yep, episode. Yep, I feel like uh, because Cameron has been the most anti Miles Sanders person I think I've ever met in my lifetime. Uh, and I so so look, I understand exercising extreme caution with Miles Sanders because none of us here like running backs by committee. None of us do. Um, multiple times, when people in our in our comments have been, "Well, why don't you like DeAndre Swift? Why don't you like Miles Sanders?" It's because we avoid running back committees at all costs. Uh, and you should too. Uh, but Cameron is on this like disrespect Miles Sanders as much as I possibly can train. And I just want to know what in the world did Miles Sanders do to you? <laughs> and why is he on the verge of being outside your top 25 running backs? You haven't right back 25. And he should be lower. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, no offense to you. I'm sure you're a great guy. But two years ago, I was gifted with Miles Sanders on my fast. <laughs> and I tried to trade Miles Sanders for 14 weeks in a row to no avail just to find out that the next season he is ranked by ESPN at running back 11. Nothing changed, and yet they ranked him so much higher. 
And I don't know what started inside of me, but I was just so angered by this. <laughs> and I knew it all along that he was not that guy. And people still drafted him that high, but he drafted him at running back eight last year. He was going off the board in the top 10 running backs. And that was just ridiculous. All right. He finished 20th in <laughs> points per game last year. 20th. Unreal. In the four games with Jalen Hurts, he had 10 rushes for 31 yards. 17 rushes for 64 yards, 15 rushes for 57 yards. Now, the second game I skipped over because he had 14 rushes for 115 yards. But he had an 82-yard touchdown. If you take that away, he had 13 rushes for 34 yards. Oh. Jalen Hurts is going to run the ball. Oh. He had two games above 50 yards in, or out of his uh, two. Uh, so he had 31, 57, 64, and then 115. But I'm going to count that as 34 because you take away that one rush. He was averaging barely three yards a carry. And like I said, Jalen Hurts can take away the rushing yards. Kenneth Gainwell came in and they said that he has some of the best hands that they've ever seen out of a rookie. The coaching staff said they're going to use him like Naheem Hines. So Miles Sanders will have no, no effect in the passing game whatsoever. Jalen Hurts taking away rushing yards. He is going to continue to fall. And Personally, I think they're going to end up cutting Boston Scott and keeping Kerry on Johnson to use him in a Marlon Mack role to keep up with that uh, Indianapolis style, style, of offense. style of offense. And this year, I project him to be a Kenyon Drake of last year at best. See, I don't disagree with that, yet I still haven't ranked higher. But, sorry, was there anything more you need to rank? No, 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 no. I, I just don't <laughs> draft him. <laughs> if, if he comes to you in the top six rounds, don't draft him. Take a wide receiver. Take Darren Waller. Take George Kittle. Take Robbie Anderson. <laughs> yeah. Take Jerry Judy. Oh, 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 I was going to say, all right, I need totally to move this out before this gets too out of hand. Um, so here, let me ask you this, because we're very anti-Josh Jacobs on this podcast. Josh Jacobs, just don't mess around. Uh, at the end of last season uh, where you're saying, oh, man, I'm not going to play. And then you actually end up playing K. Okay, Josh Jacobs, we, we probably think you're a perfectly fine human being. Yet. But anyways, for fantasy purposes, you annoy us. Would you rather have Josh Jacobs or Miles Sanders? Josh Jacobs. That was quick. I'd rather take Josh oh, Jacobs man. two rounds before Miles Sanders. <laughs> oh, man. No. I, seriously, I just want to know what he did to you. <laughs> I like, just... this, this isn't just like a – like it never is, on my draft list again. This is just like at all costs, just, I must destroy Miles Sanders. No, it's just a deep conviction that I know that he's gonna be that far down this year. You've just, like this is like a Thanos mentality you have with Miles <laughs> Sanders. Fine, he's out of the draft. Oh, I'm okay my with it. Goodness. I will not go to the extreme of taking Josh Jacobs two rounds ahead of Miles Sanders, but I would gladly take Josh Jacobs over Miles Sanders. See, and I'm still taking Miles Sanders ahead of Josh Jacobs. Oh, my God. But wow. <laughs> Even I, after I, all those stats that he just dropped, look, some I, of so, us want to win, some of us don't. <laughs> all I'm saying is Josh Jacobs is pretty close to not having three yards of carry on his career, Gosh, too. Uh, and then you give me the choice of basically J.K. Dobbins or – Miles Sanders, and I don't really want either of them, but mm -hmm. alas, here we are. That's enough on Miles Sanders because uh, we're all pretty much in consensus. He's in a nightmare situation in Philadelphia, and we don't see that getting better, uh, especially with the addition of all these running backs and the change of head coach as well. Um, yeah, no, it is not looking good for Miles Sanders. I, I was way off on Josh Jacobs. He's averaging 4.3 yards in an attempt. Last year, he was averaging 3.9, and after week three, he was averaging barely above three. Okay, there we go. So, so that's, that's a correction on the last yeah. podcast. That's my bad. If you thought that was absurd on our Goodness. last podcast, it we made the correction now. We need – we need. Uh, gosh, did you guys ever watch Around the Horn? Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. where we went I mean, wrong. Tony Reale, <laughs> uh, or errors and omissions. That would, yeah, we need we need a Tony. Tony Reale, come help us out, man. Please. <laughs> We can Please. pay you nothing. Yeah, we'll pay. <laughs> okay, all right. Moving on, uh, Cameron, you brought up Jalen Hurts. Um, we're all we're a little bit scattered on him, but not not really. Uh, I have him the highest at QB twelve. Uh, I've been notoriously optimistic on Jalen Hurts uh, all season, all off season. Tyler, you have him just behind me at QB thirteen. Cameron has him at QB sixteen. Um, obviously. Jalen Hurts' value comes from his legs, not from his arm. Um, 
Tyler, you, we, we, you and I have him inside of the top 15. Cameron, you have him outside of the top 15 QBs. I'm going to do a split here. You should get like a minute to express why you have Jalen Hurts ranked where he is. Why is he outside of your top 15 QBs, Cameron? I just don't trust him 100% yet, and I think that's kind of what it comes down to. The quarterbacks I have above him from 12 to 15, I think he falls in that top like 16 to 12 range is kind of where I got him. I got Joe Burrow, Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield, and Matthew Stafford ahead of Jalen Hurts. And this just because I trust their arms more, I think Jalen Hurts has the highest ceiling out of all those quarterbacks because of, like you said, his legs. I just think he's such a big question mark, and we don't know what that Philadelphia offense is really going to look like. Yeah, sample size is small. Still some questions at running back. Tyler, why? What, give me the pro inside the top 15 argument. Um, I'll start off by listing all those tier one quarterbacks again that are, that I have at least above Hertz, uh, Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar, Kyler, Dak, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers. I still have Deshaun Watson. Cause I'm still assume I'm, I'm still preparing as if he's playing. If he's not, then that changes a lot. Yeah, Talk right. to me at the end of July. Yeah. Then I'll probably have Deshaun Watson outside of my top 25, top yeah. 30. Yep. Um, then Brady follows Watson. Then I have Ryan Tannehill at 10 and Justin Herbert at 11. So then the next spot comes down to Stafford, Hertz, maybe Burrow for some people. And to me, I would trust Stafford a little bit more than Hertz, at least just to be that last spot in the tier one, just because you are in a new offense with better weapons that you did than you had before. Mm-hmm. Um so I still I would give the edge to Stafford. The only reason why I think Hertz then follows right after and then is in the top 15 um, with the mystery of the backfield and with a mobile quarterback, it makes sense in my mind at least that Hertz gets some carries out of out of whatever situations happening in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, and like Cam said, it's hard to kind of truly feel comfortable ranking him at the moment just because there's such a small sample size i think the sample size is kind of you know you know it's evened out then by the amount of carries that he could have on yeah. you know or at least just the rushing yards that he'll have yeah. maybe not design carries per se but he'll have rushing yards and i think that kind of balances everything out for sure yeah i'm and my I, i've been pro jalen hurts all season um I all off season. I mean, I've, I've dropped the stat in his four starts at the end of the season last year. Um, you take out the one that he got yanked from Nate Sudfeld, which Doug Peterson, oh. you tried to tank the game. It's okay. You can say it. You're not a part of the Eagles anymore. It's okay. Um, just say it for the rest of us. Just, yeah. Just so we can all be satisfied and still think you hold your reputation. I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going too hard on guys that could easily just slander me. Um <laughs> Finishes QB seven in those four games. I mean, we've seen the value in rushing quarterbacks in fantasy football. Jalen Hurts is is that kind of a guy. Um, I mean, he's probably, maybe this is too out there to say, I think he's probably Walmart Lamar Jackson. Mm. Gets it done with his legs. Doesn't throw it a ton, but has the talent to throw the football. Um, I mean, his, I, in reality, who's battling for that 12 spot, like you said, Tyler, is Matt Stafford. And Jalen Hurts. And I'm going to take Jalen Hurts just because he's got the upside with his legs, and that's far more valuable for QBs in fantasy football. And even look at some of the guys that I have ahead of Jalen Hurts. Um, Tom Brady doesn't do much with his legs. He's, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Jalen Hurts is better than Tom Brady, but for fantasy purposes, Tom doesn't run the football a lot. Aaron Rodgers certainly doesn't scramble the football a lot. Justin Herbert gets it done a little bit with his legs, but he's not. Jalen Hurts. Right. Like, he's, he, he's not that running type. Like Jalen Hurts. Yes, correct. Yes, thank you. I'm like, oh goodness, why now you're throwing me off my game here? Uh, right. All those guys don't have the 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 running talent that Jalen Hurts does, but golly, they're also talented. They're all of them are talented passers, and I mean, even Ryan Tannehill, he can throw to that range. He scrambles a little bit, yeah. but it's just an offense yeah. that he's in. So, yeah. um, I like Jalen Hurts tail end of the QB ones, and if you have him sniffing QB one range, kind of like Antonio Gibson right? With the running backs. I think he's kind of in that same range of he probably could be your running back or excuse me, your QB one. He's also not a guy I'm going to put all of my stock into and walk out of my draft with only him as my quarterback. I do need some backup on it. Yep. Absolutely. I, 
I don't disagree with that. I'm not so positive on Jalen Hurts that I think he could be your QB one, and that's all you yeah. need. I think you do. You probably do want an insurance policy on him. Yeah, and I, and I guess I don't know, just a minor detail. You had said that he's kind of like the Walmart Lamar Jackson. I'd almost say he's a Walmart like Russell Russell Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, or Deshaun that's probably Watson. more accurate where they are athletic enough to get out of the pocket and get upfield versus Lamar who has all the design runs and Lamar is still got some question marks on throwing a ball Yeah, <laughs> versus Wilson and Watson just have absolute cannons of arms. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I would agree with that comp more. Um, so yeah, I take back sure. my statement and more of a Russell Wilson, I think. Let's move on to the guys. Jalen Hurts will be throwing the football too. And we'll start with their first round pick. Uh, <laughs> Bless you. Bless you good God, sir. My yes. bad. <laughs> cut it, cut it out. No. <laughs> editor, edit, where's edit, our editor? Got it, edit out. We Man. don't have it. <laughs> Devonta Smith, first round pick, uh, pick 10 overall for the Eagles. Uh, play college football with Joan Hurts. Uh, we all have him inside of our top 40. Tyler has him right at 40. Cameron has him at 39. I have him at 35. What, Cameron, what do we think of Devonta Smith this season? Because he he's probably the number one wide receiver in Philadelphia. But, man, he's not a sexy name to have as your number one wide receiver. And he's, a, he's another tough – I mean, these wide receivers are so hard to judge in their first year. Uh, another plug to our Instagram on our player spotlight. At the FFLs on Instagram. And – we uh, we po- we posted about Devonte Smith, and the problem is last year there were six wide receivers taken in the first round, and two of them finished in the top thirty. See you later, Justin Jefferson. And Brandon Ayuk would have been top thirty on points per game basis. So you could you could push three, but you took I mean uh, Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs were taking top twenty guys, you know, so top like 15. top fifteen. Top 15. So, like, these are these are guys that you're expecting a lot from. But in that first year, like, Henry Ruggs is expected to be the guy. And Jerry Judy was given the opportunity to be the guy. Now, they had subpar QB play for a lot of the year. But you just never know how these wide receivers are going to develop. They're all coming out so young. I think Devontae Smith has a crazy high ceiling because mm-hmm. he, could, he, he could just eat up targets in that Philadelphia offense. But he could also really fall back and just need another year to develop in that offense and Jalen Hurts is definitely like still a question mark with his arm we know he'll produce with his legs but his arm is is a question mark and so pairing those two up together that's why we have him closer to his floor but we know that there is a lot of ceiling there so he's a guy you can take that late round flyer on yeah and he's like he's almost going too early to be a late round flyer which yeah is actually really annoying because I think he, he should be a guy that should be considered like a sleeper or a late yeah. round flyer, but his ADP is like, like right yeah. in the middle of like his ceiling and his floor. Yeah. And it's like, I wouldn't take him any earlier, but yeah. I also don't, but I also know he's not going to drop any lower yeah. than that. So, I mean, he, he's a guy, I think I have, I'm just more optimistic mm-hmm. on him and I only have him ahead of each of you by four or five spots, but I think I'm just more optimistic on him because the theme, the theme of this year's NFL draft was, Let's pair guys who they played with in college football. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne. You have um, Devonta Smith and Jalen Hurts, and Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Like that was the theme to have yeah. some sort of continuity for these young guys. And I think that's the only reason why I'm a bit higher on Devonta Smith. And I don't even think that's a good selling point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you even have Waddle and Tua down in Miami. Yes. Thank you. I, that's the other one I forgot about. Yeah. So I think. I think we we referenced this a couple episodes ago in a mail. I think it was actually in the mailbag. I think it was the mailbag. First, where we talked about, you had mentioned Devontae Smith as someone that you're looking at. Yep. And we both we all kind of agreed and mentioned that the best, at least wide receivers that come out of college football or the, be- the ones that translate the best in their rookie season are the route runners. Mm-hmm. The ones that can, that have polished and defined route moves in routes. Um, and I think Justin Jefferson showed that last year. C.D. Lamb did a little bit, but more so C.D. He just had awful QB play once yeah, tackling yeah. down. And, and C.D. is also that open space or yeah. get out in space and I will do something, right? So Justin Jefferson was really the lone route runner yeah. in that first round. And look what happened, right? He set the 
rookie season record for for yards and 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 became pretty much wide receiver one for the Vikings. Yep. So I think with Devontae, I think Devontae is the best route runner in this or out of all the receivers. You could argue, draft. yeah, you could argue Jamar Chase. I'd uh, still go Devontae Smith. Yeah. I would, and and at that point, it's if you compare the two, Jamar yep. Chase has Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins and Joe Mixon. Yeah. <laughs> To compete with versus Devontae has Jalen Rager and Dallas Goddard. Zach Ertz, <laughs> maybe. No, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. But like I said, Devontae has pretty much everything going, like looking up for him, right? Where he has arguably the best situation out of all the yes. wide receivers in the draft. So I think, yeah, he's it's that tough middle spot that he's being taken right now. And you're like, I don't want to take him earlier. Yeah. But if he does fall to me at a certain pick, I'm yeah, I would take it. I would take a shot on him. Definitely not as a flex, but I take him. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, before we move on to other question marks at the pass catcher position, let's talk about the one guy who we all think will be involved in that passing game. And it's Dallas Goddard. We all have him at tight end seven. How much do we do we really want to say on Dallas Goddard other than he's probably one of the best top tight end options you have? He's certainly not in that top three. He falls out of that next tier of like five to six. He's probably teetering on uh, maybe five, four and five, excuse me. Could be tight end six, could be tight end 11. Yeah. Um, but we all have him as one of the better options after the top five or six guys go. Uh, Cameron, you have any thoughts on that? I mean, it, I don't know how much analysis we can give on Dallas Goddard other than he's probably the the most reliable target the Eagles yes, have right now. For sure. And he'll, he'll put up points. I mean, he has, even when Zach Ertz been there, he's put up points. And I think right. that's going to continue. Uh, we've said this multiple times, rookie or, rookie or young quarterbacks look for tight ends. He's a tight end. So he's going to put up points. It's just... Maybe he could contend for that four or five spot. I don't know how likely it is, but I don't think he falls out of your top 10 either. He's kind of that guy that's going to stick right there. I wouldn't reach for him, but at the same time, when you come to pick tight ends, if he's available at the spot that you feel comfortable picking tight ends, then that, that's kind of when I would take him. Don't draft him in the same range as TJ Hawkinson, Mark no. Andrews, mm. Kyle Pitts even. I'd still take yeah. Kyle Pitts at yes. least a round or two yeah. ahead of him, yes. but in most mock drafts that I've been in, he falls to the range where I say, okay, I have three running backs. I have three wide receivers and I might have my you know, top seven QB that yeah. I want. I'm going to look at Dallas Goddard. I'm yeah. going to look at Noah Fant. I'm going to look at those guys there. And I think Dallas Goddard falls right into that category of, I feel good about drafting him here because yeah. I'm not reaching for him, but I'm, he's certainly not going to fall on your drafts because tight ends are just too scarce. For yeah. sure. Yeah. And I think, I think between Hawkinson, Andrews, Pitts, Goddard, and Thomas, Goddard probably has one of the better chances of finishing tight end four because we know that the three are salt or mm -hmm. are just locked up, right? I think Goddard has one of the better chances to finish four, possibly even five. I mean, it's really a crapshoot after, I mean, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Any tight end that you put within there, they will finish, you know, you could have them at, you could have, let's say Goddard at seven. Goddard could finish at five, right? Pitts at six. Pitts could finish four, right? Like yeah. it, if as long as, like you guys said, if you're at a spot where you need a tight end and he's available and you're not reaching and you know he's definitely not going to swing back to me after yeah. this pick, go ahead and take him. He's going, he, he will produce, yeah, right? Like he, sure. he will be good for your squad. So absolutely. Uh, and I don't think we need to question too many other pass catchers in that offense. At best, I'm probably going to summarize our thoughts. Jalen Rager, late round flyer, and I don't feel good about him being a late round flyer. Mm -hmm. Zach Ertz, don't draft him. Um, unless he's traded. Unless if he's traded, then we can talk about that. But hopefully he's traded to a team we can talk about in a future podcast, yeah. not one that's been behind. Um, we might have to just drop that in our own personal question for a mailbag question at that Ooh, point. Then, good for idea, sure. good idea. Manipulation of our mail. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This one's from Wenzel underscore one. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> Is it a burner account? <laughs> we have burner. Oh, 
this a pilot class? Is it, I'm not I Kevin Durant. Say, I didn't say that. I didn't not say Kevin. That. Kevin Durant, don't come at me on Twitter. <laughs> oh, please come at me. I would love that. I would you, screenshot that and become famous is, like that. Put it as my Twitter <laughs> handle. Exactly. <laughs> like, well, let's move on to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we'll start with America's team. Oh, goodness. yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Let's start with uh the guy who really we found out last year makes or breaks the, the fantasy value at least of all the other dallas cowboys it's not even close it's not even close <laughs> dak prescott and Saley, he makes everyone better on that team there's no question deserving of every dollar he got in that contract we all have him as a top five qb at this point how confident are we of our top five ranking. Do we think he could slide any higher than that? Or do we think he's more likely to fall lower? Uh, I'm going to default Cameron. Let's default to you for this one. All right. Before he got hurt last year, he was averaging 27 points per game in the first four games. Oh, Mahomes mm-hmm. finished with 25 on the year. So obviously it would be a lot to keep that up, but it's just showing that he's putting up ridiculous numbers in 2019. He had 4,900 yards and 30 touchdowns. So, you know, he's going to put up a lot of points. So I don't, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities that he's quarterback one this year. Absolutely not. You got Amari Cooper on that team. You got um, the guy who will finish ahead of Amari Cooper. I almost forgot his name because he's not even relevant enough being a wide receiver one topic. (laughs) Michael Gallup is not really there for fantasy value, but he does help a lot in the passing game. Blake Jarwin's back. I don't know really how that fits in, but he's got a ton of weapons. And I can't forget about Zeke. Zeke that touches the ball a lot. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And so he's going to be putting up crazy numbers. It's just how much does that injury affect? Him? That's what it comes down to because we saw with Carson Wentz put up that MVP season towards ACL and just was never the same. And so is, if that comes back and can play like he had been and he's okay with scrambling around, he's going to put up ridiculous numbers. I have him at the tier. I got my first tier quarterbacks as – Mahomes, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray. I got him at the beginning of that next tier, but that next tier is not that like far of a jump, you know, where yeah. like my running backs, I kind of got McCaffrey and then you have like then, seven guys yes. there. And then there's a big that. jump. Whereas yeah. the, these quarterbacks, there's not that big of a jump for that second tier. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I think my only concern with Dak is how comfortable is he going to be with the mobile? Yes. Um, I mean, that, I mean, when you're when you're essentially lower leg makes a right angle. Yeah, that's brutal. Oh, um, that was like Kevin Werbad. No, yeah, really. Gordon Hayward. We don't talk about. Yeah. We don't talk about Paul George. <laughs> we don't talk about all those. But all I know is when your leg makes a right angle, it ain't good. Yeah, at least below the kneecap. Um, that ain't good. So my only concern is with his mobility. Um, but I mean, man, his he, he's got so many weapons that. You know, I, I, I don't have his rushing numbers. I wish I would have looked up his rushing numbers in front of me to see how much of a difference I would make. But, um, I mean, at the end of the day, he, he, he's got so much talent around him. He's clearly got a talented arm. It's going to be tough to put him outside the top five, let alone top seven yeah, QBs. Sure. So don't disagree with anything you said there, Cameron. Let's move on to uh, – He's had between 300 and 350 rushing yards every year. So that's 35 fantasy points. And – but he's had – Six rushing touchdowns all last year, except for 2019. He had three. Okay. So he, he does put up rushing touchdowns. So that might be interesting to see how that changes. Yeah. I don't know if that makes me more hesitant or doesn't phase me much at all yeah. because the only guy I think I the only guy I have ahead of Dak outside of those top three is Warren Jackson. Yeah. But yeah, that's interesting. Uh, clearly, Dak's got some rushing value. We'll see how comfortable he is being mobile next season for sure. Uh, let's talk about uh, the running back of that offense, who I think arguably took the biggest hit from Dak's absence, and that's Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, running back three before Dak was injured last season, then it was just a plummet. Zeke still finished inside the top ten running backs. I believe he was running back ten exactly. Um, we all have him. I'm the only one who has him inside my top five. I have him at running back five. Cameron and Tyler, you both have him at running back six. Tyler, uh, maybe first give the people the six guys you're taking ahead of Ezekiel Elliott because I'm pro Zeke being in the top five, but I also understand why some people may be hesitant uh, and not be willing to call their shot on Zeke inside the top five. So uh, give me the guys you're taking ahead of Zeke. 
uh, but also what's your outlook for him this year? Yeah. So the five, or I guess the six guys that there's five for sure that I would take in front of Zeke. Sure. There's McCaffrey, Cook, Kamara, Henry, and Nick Chubb. And Nick Chubb's a hot take one. Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb is going as like 14 overall in ESPN leagues, which it, is insane to me. Boggles my mind. So I um those five for sure I'm taking ahead of Zeke. Then it really comes down to Zeke and Saquon. I could maybe look at Jonathan Taylor, Aaron Jones, but the I go back to the fact that. Zeke finished as a top 10 running back with the disaster of that offense last year, right? Even when, and even with all of the fumble problems that he had, granted, he did have a couple games where he had more than one fumble, which is not pretty, but he still finished top 10, right? Like even when nothing was going right for him, he still finished top 10. So that he's probably my sixth guy. But I think the one guy that I would maybe potentially think about taking over him is is Saquon, just because Saquon has shown um, that he can do everything. Arguably more versatile. Yeah. Yes, arguably more versatile. Arguably, and he, yeah, arguably. And he's and he's he's had a running back one status before, mm-hmm. and that Kenny Galladay signing. I know we've talked about this before. That opens up the field for yeah. Saquon so much. Yeah. So. If you take Saquon at six instead of Ezekiel Elliott, I don't think anyone is going to say, dude, that was a horrible pick. You shouldn't have done that. Right. No one's going to say that. Yeah. Um, So at that point, it's just, who do you like better? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Absolutely. And Zeke, I think Zeke's one of those guys that you just have to take your stance Mm -hmm. on. And wherever your stance is, that's your stance on him. I don't think there's, there is a wrong spot to draft him, which is outside of the top 10 running backs and probably inside of the top three, I would say. Uh, well, actually, I'd say inside of the top two. I th- if you draft him a running back three, I might be a little bit surprised, but I think you can make yeah. arguments against Derrick Henry. You can make arguments against Alvin Kamara. You can make arguments against Nick Chubb. You can make arguments against Saquon Barkley. It's really tough to find a solid argument yeah. against Zeke. The only thing you can say is that his his uh, yards per carry uh, has gone down uh, since he entered the league. He's not as efficient of a runner anymore, but man, it's really tough to argue him is running yeah. back three when Dak was healthy last season. Go ahead, Cameron. Just two two big stats. Yep. Before before Dak went out last year, the first five games of the year, he was averaging 23 points fantasy points a game. <sighs> Over his career, he's averaged 20 fantasy points a game. That's, yeah. that's all I consistent. I was going to say, too, if you go back to 2018, because I think 2017 was when he had his little suspension <laughs> yep. scandal yep. thing. He only played 10 games. Yeah. So 2018, he averaged 18 points a week, and he only played uh, 15 games. Yeah. 2019, 18.2 he averaged. Last year, he, he averaged 13.2. 13.2 points a week. Yeah. And that That's was without the, Dak. That was without Dak and with pretty without pretty much an offensive line. Yeah. yeah. So and that's still a top and that was a top ten finish for him. So if I you know, obviously this Cowboys team is not the 2018, 2019 Cowboys. But Zeke Zeke has proven that with even all that's going on around him, he will either be bottom top ten or he'll be a very high top ten running back. For sure. So you can't you cannot go wrong with taking Zeke as your running back one. I think I said this last year about Zeke, and this will be the last time before we move on to the pass catchers. I seriously think outside of Christian McCaffrey, Zeke might be the running back with the most safest floor in the first round. You can argue me with Dalvin Cook and I think I got Dalvin, but then I would say Zeke is your I, and, and I would accept Dalvin, but I I would I might even argue that Zeke has a safer floor than Dalvin only because Dalvin does get involved with the pass game quite a bit. And he does get involved there, but so does Zeke. Um, maybe that's, that's not really a hot take. I don't think, I don't think I can say that, but anyways, let's move on to the pass catchers. Uh, let, let's start with Amari Cooper. I think he's a guy we all like. Uh, we all have him in the top 10 or right on the verge of the top 10. Cameron has him at wide receiver 10. Tyler and I have him both at wide receiver 11. Cameron, I know you love Amari Cooper. So I'm going to let you take it away yeah. on Amari Cooper. Um, what are the odds Amari Cooper uh, falls outside of your top 10 this season? Do you think he does it all? I think he could. I think 
but I don't think it's slower than wide receiver 13. Maybe that's what I should have asked. What do I you think, think Amari Cooper's floor is I, in comparison to his ceiling? Uh, let's see. Let's look at my rankings real quick. I'm going to go with quick wide receiver 13. I think this is floor. I think he's he's just so solid. He was averaging 20 fancy points a game with Dak at the home. Yeah. He finished with 130 targets, 94 receptions, and five touchdowns last year. Like He was still putting up great numbers. He was getting open – all the time with Ben DiNucci and Annie Dalton throwing out a ball. DiNucci! So, you know, <laughs> this, this is a guy who is going to be open. He's going to catch passing touchdowns. I think the touchdowns go up. I think the yards go up. The receptions go up with Dak. Dak loves this guy. You know, like, he throws – he's a safety blanket. Yeah. And when you're coming back from injury, you're going to look for that safety blanket a lot. And I think those two players for Dak are going to be Zeke and Amari Cooper. Yeah. And so I think Amari's going to benefit a lot. And that's why – that's why – I wasn't as high on your hot take is just because I think CD's still that new guy, you know, he only had five games with CD lamb. So coming back off that injury, maybe, maybe he repairs it, but I think if he's feeling pressure, he's going to go right to Amari Cooper. And that, that's just my thought on how, how Dak's going, his process of looking around cross fields going to be this year. I mean, and it was Amari Cooper and Calvin Ridley fighting for yes. wide receiver one, wide receiver two, why with the top three wide receiver spots yeah. in fantasy football last season at the start of the season. So I mean, CD Lamb was still great, but Amari Cooper was clearly the yes. guy for Dak Prescott. Um, Tyler, I'm going to move on to you for, for CD Lamb, since that was your hot take. Yep. Um, we all have him close to our top 20. He's inside of our top 25 for sure. Uh, give me the pro CD Lamb argument of why he should be inside of the top 20 wide receivers, even though you have him outside of your top 20. Yeah, so I, I, I'll i start with Amari, right? Amari Cooper is the do-it-all wide receiver for the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. He will catch the short and the intermediate and the deep balls, right? He does it all. I think with CD, he he's not so much the do-it-all receiver. He's definitely he, – we referenced this actually in Wednesday's episode. But CD is this like open – you know, get out in the open field and, you know, do your do your thing. Get, yes. get your yards. Typically, you don't want to bank on a wide receiver that solely just gets yards after the catch. Um, but I think CD is actually the safest choice in, in terms of yards after catch. Okay. Where CD is going to constantly get the number two corner, right? And yes, Amari will still take will still do well against the number one corner for sure. But I think CD has and are you a, a very similar um, floor to like a Terry McLaurin or a, you know, maybe, oh, let me find another one. <laughs> Let's say Terry, um, Terry McLaurin, we're pretty, we're all pretty high on this. Yeah. Um, you think like a Deontay Johnson? Yeah, Deontay. Sure. Where um, I think that short game is really going to be, a big part of CD's game coming into this year, just because I don't think you don't. What's Amari's contract is if it's it's definitely a top five wide receiver contract. Right? Yeah, you don't pay a wide receiver that amount of money just to run curl routes right. or slants or you know. Well, you pay Michael bit. Thomas that much to run slants, but anyway, sorry. I mean, if you, just because you're the Saints <laughs> and you just don't know what you're doing, right? um, you're just an awful franchise. Just an awful franchise. So. <laughs> From three Minnesota Vikings fans. Yeah. Continue. Yes, yeah. It's <laughs> so, cool, baby. Um, see, there's really – it's hard to tell off of last year because, right, Dak went down week five, and that was a CD's rookie year, right? Yeah. I think teams are now starting to realize you need complementary wide receivers where you know, once you get someone that can do it all or maybe go deep, but then you need to have a short route guy. Maybe that's Gallup, but I – Gallup's think, more of the deep guy. I was going to say Gallup is more of a deep threat. So I, it, something to me just says C.D. Lamb will take a lot of – he may actually – maybe he's more like a Curtis Samuel, except Samuel is not so much the out in open space guy as C.D. is because I can think back to college and even there were a couple times last year where C.D. could have broken a play, you know – broken it big right and scored but it's the nfl so it doesn't really happen as much as in college but i think cd is the um the better version of a curtis samuel where you give him space 
he will make do something. Yeah. yeah, he will make guys miss, and he will do something special. I think CD Lamb is. He was knocking on the door. He was inside the top fifteen, if I remember correctly, last season for running back or for for wide receivers before Dak went down in the first five weeks. Yep. Uh, sniffing top ten. Um, so I mean, he's gonna get volume. I think. I think Dak's gonna try and find him. He's not just gonna force feed Amari. That's for sure. But uh, this is for all the people who are trying to make CD Lamb be the breakout number two wide receiver this season. Yeah, I'm looking at the camera specifically for this. Don't be that guy. Okay. He's not Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin became the top wide receiver in that offense because Mike Evans missed quite a few games that season, and Chris Godwin was clearly the guy with Jameis Winston just throwing like there's no tomorrow in that offense. Mm -hmm. Dak's not always going to do that because they have Ezekiel Elliott. Last year it was Calvin Ridley. It's without Julio Jones almost the entire year. Um, And, I mean, Matt, he was really the only target Matt Ryan could throw to because Russell Gage wasn't reliable. Don't be the guy that says CD Lamb is going to be the breakout number two wide receiver this year because he has Amari Cooper there. They have Ezekiel Elliott. They have Dak Prescott. They have a plethora of weapons. It's just not in the cards for CD Lamb to finish inside the top 10 wide receivers, I don't think. Can he finish inside the top 15? I think he can. I'm, there's just so many more talented guys that I don't think we need to force this. I'm going to call my shot on a breakout wide receiver too, because it's just not common. We haven't, Chris Godwin was the first one we saw crack the top five in that regard. Yep. yep. And I think with, I think it's a better, there's a better chance of, and so when I say CD finishes higher than Amari, I'm saying it as like CD finishes like 12 and Amari finishes 13. Like Amari's going to be so, so close. To it's him. a hot take for a reason right, too. Right. It's, <laughs> it's a hot take. It's a hot take. Please don't, you know, mark my words, but um, like, like I said, it will, it won't be this like, you know, few and far between where CD is 11 yeah. or something like that. And Amari finishes like 23. Yeah. That's not going to happen. That, that won't happen. So I would say it's more, it's more likely to see them finish literally, you know, one after the other than it is them being so far apart. Yeah. 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 I couldn't agree with that more. Um, they're both could be very talented wide receivers. Wouldn't surprise me if CD Lamb outperforms all of our rankings for him. Yep. Last guy, last patch, pass catcher I want to talk about before we get to fan question, mostly because I don't think we really need to talk about the tight ends or not. We're starting in your fantasy nope. league. Nope. Uh, Michael Gallup, only because he's a third wide receiver in that offense. Uh, last season, even with Ben DiNucci and Andy Dalton in, in quarterback play, Michael Gallup was still a top 40, top 40 wide receiver. I know we've added a new talent of guys and other guys yeah. are coming back from injury, finding more solidified roles in their offense, but uh, I've got him a wide receiver 41. Cameron, you have a wide receiver 47. Tyler at 53. Um, I'm just, for, Cameron, what, what are your thoughts there? Why do we have Michael Gallup so low if he was a top 40 wide receiver it, last season? It's just like you said, it's, I mean, it's everything you said. He's just third wide receiver coming to that um, whole whole bunch of other guys that we like to ahead of him. I I think he, we have him that low just because his ceiling isn't as high as some of these other guys. Michael Gallup last year, just so you know, put up – had 105 targets. He only, he only caught the ball 59 times. Oh, oh man. He had 850 yards and five touchdowns. Oh, man. He was averaging 11 fantasy points a game. So, I mean, this is a guy who can do it. It's just – like he can be a solid flex play if you need him, but that he's nothing more than that. You know, he's, like his his ceiling is wide receiver twenty five. Yeah, like yeah, at, at the very best. I think so. But he's also a guy that you know, being the, the third wide receiver, he could fall. So that's just kind of my take on Michael Gallup. I think he's a guy if you get later in the rounds, like don't shy away from him. He's not a don't take, but he's not a guy that you're gonna get like, oh, this could he could really break out this year because he'll, yeah. he'll be probably pretty good in that offense. Like they're gonna put up points and so. I think he's an he's a decent late round guy. Yeah, I think and I I think I mentioned this on the podcast last week. He's in that range of players that they're probably going to be number one wide receivers on a bad offense. If I remember correctly, he's going in the same range as like Devonta Smith, um, Corey Davis, Cordy Davis. Yeah, like are, would you rather take a guy who's going to be the number one wide receiver in a bad offense or? A high volume offense with a guy yeah. who's a number three. And I think that just comes down to personal preference and it comes down to player preference, I think too. So yeah. don't disagree with anything you said there. I think Michael Gallup is probably going to be one of the safer guys to take in that range, but yeah. not a guy who I think is going to be a sleeper or a guy you should rush to drafts. I think if, if Amari or CD are out for the season, Gallup is the hottest pickup yes. on the waiver. Yes. Or, or, like if he's, 
Absolutely. If he is not drafted, yep. he is 100% going to be the hottest pickup yep. if one of those top two receivers. He was out. 16 fantasy points a game the year before CD game. So he outscored he Amari Cooper. Uh, it was like the final, I think it was like the final or like the second half of the season uh, before they drafted CD Lamb. Uh, Michael Gallup outscored Amari Cooper and out targeted yep. Amari Cooper. So I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility um, that Michael Gallup could finish inside of the top 40 again. Actually, I think it's, I think it's probably likely, but mm. um, yeah, if, if Amari or CD goes down, Michael Gallup is absolutely the guy you should go after, but it's still way too early to tell. Let's move on to the mailbag to wrap mailbag. out our episode. Mailbag. I know I feel like we need like a soundboard where I can we push really a button. And we need a soundboard. <clears throat> we're going to have to make like- it happen. If you'd like to give us a soundboard, we'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. Give us. No. Um, let's start with – let's start with our guys whose name I cannot pronounce again. Oh, no. <laughs> Mr. Mashy. This, well, that's what we should just refer to him as. Mr. Mashy, Aiden. Uh, another, another interesting question. How could I start slash join a dynasty fantasy football league? And I know – us three are finally starting one this season. Uh, we have never been a part of one before, and I think we've all been itching to be a part of one, but we just haven't found the right group, the right group yeah. of people. To like, <laughs> right. And part, of, and part of it is you need to find the right group yes. of people. Um, maybe I'll just offer my advice here, and you two can follow up with any other suggestions. No, all but you, I think, all, you, all, you. all right, I'll take it. <laughs> Honestly, I think your best bet is to start a dynasty league with your friends. Like, I think that is the best way to do it because if you're going to start a dynasty league with a bunch of strangers who you don't necessarily know, there's going to be chances that people flake out. There's going to be chances that people just kind of give up after a year and then they don't check years prior. And then a dynasty league just becomes boring because everybody's stuck with the same players. And there's not as much continuity in that versus if you get together with some of your friends, I think that's the best way to do it. I think that's how you build more of, of the lasting the lasting league, the lasting memories. Um, I don't know. There's probably a, a one-stop shop to join a dynasty fantasy football league, but uh, I don't think I would ever personally go that route, mostly because if I want to start a dynasty league, I want to start it with my friends who I can trash talk for four years straight and say, guess what? I took eighth last season, but I've got the youngest roster here. You've got a couple of guys who are going to be retiring next year. I got a good chance to come back and meet you. It's a lasting competition yes. with your friends versus joining a bunch of randos who may end up being competitive with you and you might make some good friends out of it. But I also think it's a higher likelihood that some of those people drop out after a year if their team For sure. just sucks. For sure. Yeah. Any disagreements? No. Nope. Excellent. Let's move on to K Vieira 09. Rank each other. From best to worst fantasy coach, not fantasy owner. You thought it was fantasy owner. Maybe we oh. need to tweak that one and make it fantasy owner. Kevin, I think you would enjoy this more only because I feel like from what Cameron told me, I know you decently enough to probably guess it would be a more fun banter filled conversation to rank each other best to worst in fantasy owners. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to change the question. If you really want coach, submit the question again next week and we'll answer that too. Yeah, we'll but, answer that too. but I think for now, let's do best to worst fantasy owners fantasy yeah. managers for uh, those of you who don't know kevin was my the best man at my wedding so he is probably watching these episodes just to hear this question that's so, probably true, that's so we, probably can't, true. <laughs> we can't let him down or i'll hear about it forever that he'll <laughs> we'll hear about it in our dynasty league yes. this year <laughs> yes uh let's make it quick uh rank let's do this well, rank worst to best. You only get to talk about the person you think is best. Because we we could sit out here and slander each other, but I mean, we don't have that much time left for the podcast. We have to wrap it up eventually. Cameron, go first. I think I'm the best at trading. <laughs> at, trading, trading at trading. At trading. Okay. He said at trading. trading. Okay. Take it easy. Okay. Take it easy. Okay. Okay. I, okay. I do. I and and a lot of it is just persistence. But I do look for that. That that is the reason I play fantasy football. Is to trade. <laughs> that is 100 percent the reason. I would say I'm the worst drafter. Um, I think I have gotten lucky a couple of times with players. I think, I think Tyler is the best. Actually, I think Lucas is the best drafter, and I think Tyler is the best on waiver wires. That's the kind of the way I'm going to look at it. And I think I would take Tyler after me for trading. That's fair. And yep. then I would put Lucas for waiver wire. I think I'm the bottom for waiver wire and um, 
drafting, but I think I'm the best trader. Yes. So that's kind of where I stand on it. So overall manager. Overall manager, I'm going to take myself because I won last year in our league. Unbelievable. I won. This man is going off the logic that Bill Russell is the GOAT because he has the most rings. <laughs> I, had, I had Josh <laughs> Allen, I heard Derek right Henry, Alvin Kamara, Tyree Kill, Justin Jefferson. How many of those guys did you draft? It, exactly. Josh <laughs> Allen and Alvin Kamara. I'm a trader. I trade. <laughs> Tyler, go next because yeah, I, I, I wasn't surprised by that answer let's, at all. Let's bring him back down to earth. Let's bring him back to reality. <laughs> I don't blame him for his answer, though. I, can't, I really can't argue with that. I, I agree with Cam's um, opinion that he's the best <laughs> trader. I don't know how he does it. He gets every single top 10 player for his position, right? Like he gets three top 10 running backs. He gets four top 10 wide receivers. Somehow, some way he can flip like nobody's business. So I will give him that. Lucas, I think is the best ranker out of the three of us. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Trust my rankings the most. Yes, I'm just kidding. We'll look at all of ours. I think at, we all have at least for tight ends. At least for tight ends. <laughs> but, hey, throw back to Irv Smith. Don't listen to me. Don't ever listen. To me. Just Gerald you know, Everett, tight end twelve. I don't like tight ends. So <laughs> look at go. my rankings for tight ends. Look Anyways, yes. keep going. Yes. So Lucas is definitely the best at ranking players in terms of outlook and floors and ceilings and stuff. And I think I guess. I'm the best waiver person, but I would more so say it's I'm the best at buying low. Okay. Yes. On a, yes. On players. Yes. I can agree with that. Last year, I think the one, like the prime example of this last year was Miles Gaskin. Yes. Where I, in every single league I was in, it looked like I was giving up a lot for Miles Gaskin. And Gaskin actually turned out to be a average 16 fans points a game. He was a very good running back, too, for my team. So, um, like I said, I think I'm the best at buying low on yes. players. Um, Who's your best overall? The best out of us three. You know who you want to say. <sighs> you can do I, it. I have, I, you can do it. I want to say myself. You I can want do it. To. And I'm going to no say one, myself. No one's going to argue oh, with you. Here. I'm going to say myself. I'm going to argue. I Look, I may... <laughs> I may not win every single year, but that's I, all that matters. No, I'm can hold on. Bill Russell's the goat. <laughs> Bill Russell's the goat. You heard it here first. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm consistently like a top three, top four player every yeah, single year. Uh, I'll give you that. So you're better. Cons- you're better consistency wise. Consistent. Than I am. I'm consistent <laughs> in in at least building out the team. So here, so here, here's my ranking. Okay. <laughs> Here's my ranking. I'm not putting myself first because I've had the, the pleasure of playing with these two gentlemen for three years now. Um, and it, it's, they've, they've goodness, they're some of the best fantasy managers I've ever played with. Um, however, I'm, I'm, I'm going to refer to some instances in other leagues that you two haven't been able to witness, unfortunately, that I've had, Part of my French, but I've had to fight like hell to get my spot back in some of these leagues. I had, there was one year I drafted Adrian Peterson, Jamal Charles, Eddie Lacy, Danny Woodhead, all four of them. Oh. My top four running backs all got hurt that season. I lost all of them. You don't know where I finished in that league that year? Fourth. And I had no business finishing fourth, but I fought my way. I found some sleepers. I found waiver wire ads that managed to keep the pace up enough where I could finish respectfully in that league after yeah. having the first overall pick and losing Adrian Peterson. I would also say last year in our league, I had no business finishing that high. I drafted Clyde edwards Lair, Josh Jacobs. Um, not that those guys were bad. Clyde edwards Lair, man, he took a dip at the end of last season. Alan Robinson was my best wide receiver until I traded for Kenny Galladay. Um, who else did I, gosh, I drafted someone. At, Hayden Hurst was my tight end. Oh, that was a nightmare. Oh. Yeah, I still finished. I finished fourth there too. Yep. And I just goodness, I lost players throughout that season too. Cameron finished top overall. I get that. So, Cameron, the only reason why I'm putting I I have a massive amount of respect for you. The only reason why I'm putting you last is because somehow I don't know what it is, but somehow you managed to pick up these players, and I try and make better trades than you do. And you still end up with these players. So I'm last because I frustrate you. Yes, you're All right. yes, yeah. you're la- you're last because you frustrate me. And I don't know their skill that goes into it, but 
I've had to fight harder for my spot <laughs> in some of these placements. But I think Tyler nailed a ton of his points first, but I think he's probably out of the three of us. I mean, we're all, I think I like to think we're all neck and neck and we're all, oh, yeah. we're all Cameron highlighted very well. We're all very, we're all better at different yes. things than each other. Let me toot my own horn real quick. Toot toot. We're all super good fans. <laughs> like, That's why you should need, listen yes, to us. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but I think, I think for Tyler, I mean, I watched him last year, get rid of all of his top running backs yet still end up with one of the most complete rosters I've ever seen in my lifetime in fantasy football. Ended up with Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller. Miles Gaskin and Austin Eckler were his running backs. Michael Thomas, and who was your wide receiver two last season? Oh, was it Keenan Allen, was it? It was No, Keenan Allen was my... It was Keenan Allen. Yep. yep. So, I... Cameron compiles the most talented. Of course, he won the league last season. But Tyler's the best at building complete teams out of value i think um and and finding trades for both sides that are probably beneficial but sneakily more beneficial for him than the other player but alas i mean i think we're all very talented fantasy managers but uh, again I'm, I'm ranking tyler myself and cameron last unfortunately so that's a great question kevin if you want us to answer who's the best fantasy coach We'll, get, we'll do that next week. Just submit the question again. Also, short plug. If you want to submit fantasy questions to us, not just by like typing it out on our Instagram or commenting on one of our social media posts, you can send us a voice message. Uh, we're going to put that link in the description. So you can click on that link. You can copy and paste that link and you can submit your voice question to us and we can put it right on the show here. Uh, so you'll be able to hear yourself live. We'll be, answer, we'll be able to answer your question right on the show. You can look in the description for that link. Uh, go ahead, visit there, and we will answer all the voice messages yes. that you send in. Oh, yes, we will. That wraps up uh, the NFC North for us. Fellas, any final thoughts as we, as we wrap out the week here? No, I got nothing today. <laughs> I just can't wait for next week. Oh, yeah. Because I'm going to be gone. <laughs> Yes, or three stooges just being deuces of fantasy football fellas deuces deuces, deuces. <laughs>